The AP Capstone program is a combination of two AP courses that you take in succession. The first one is AP um, Seminar, and the second one is AP Research. The content of Capstone is very open-ended. So it, it's, the teacher really has the autonomy to decide what the focus is going to be of a course. So it might be a teacher may choose something that, that is, has a deep historical roots to it. Uh, or, you, know, you might have something that's more of a scientific uh, topic. It could be a, something, a social topic. It could be really anything. And, and the idea is, to, is for it to be based on what the students are interested in, in, in the class. It could be based on the strength of the teacher. Uh, it could be based on um, issues that are of importance in the world today. Uh, and so there really is a tremendous amount of flexibility in what the course content is. First year is a course called AP Seminar. And, and in this course, the students learn how to do the research. So a lot of time is spent where they are viewing research that exists out there, and it could be written research, it could be you know, works of art and theater productions. And, and typically it's taking a particular issue and looking at it from many different perspectives, uh, scientific aspects, historical aspects, you know, you know, um, the arts, different ways to look at a single topic. And you know, they explore that as a, as a group. And in, the, in the same course with the seminar, they then go on and do a group project where where they, a group of students are working on a particular topic and maybe each one deals with a different discipline as related to that topic and they, and they come together in a single product. And then that same course has an, uh, an individual project uh, where they do the same thing. They tackle a particular topic through uh, multiple lenses, multiple disciplines until they come up with you know, a finished product. So they, it's going through examining research and then working with other people and then, and then kind of doing it on their own. AP seminar would be offered to sophomores. Uh, it could also be offered to juniors. Um, the advantage of taking the course as a sophomore is that you would then have it for your college applications the following year, which is a really good selling point of the program in the first place because it is something that would distinguish you from other students who are applying to colleges. The prerequisites for the course uh, are going to be a student is expected to be enrolled in an, an, an honors level English course just because of the heavy reading and writing components involved. Uh, but in addition, the student is going to have to be enrolled in at least one other AP course uh, because the capstone program is designed to, to go in, in tandem with, with the other AP courses that are offered. So Honors English uh, and an AP course of any discipline is the uh, minimum requirements for the capstone program. In the AP seminar course, the score the student ultimately gets as assigned by the college board. So a typical AP course, you know, it's, it's a scale of one to five. And in every other AP course, that's based on the student's performance on the AP exam. Uh, in the seminar course, it's different. It's the AP, there is an AP exam and that, that counts as a percentage of the total grade. But the individual project the student does and the group project that is done, all three of those components all uh, factor together into a single AP score. The way to think about AP research is thinking about doing a master's degree. You're going to uh, do an individual research project that um, can take lots of different forms and ultimately you have to write a thesis and you have to do a um, um, a defense of that thesis at the end of the at the end of the course. In the AP re research, there is a single score that is given from the College Board, but it's based entirely on the research project that the student did and their final presentation. Um, what a lot of what a lot of the presentations are teacher scored, but the College Board will verify it, you know, based on maybe a video presentation. Um, and, but there is no exam for the research course. 
If you take both AP capstone programs, if you take AP uh, seminar, which is first, and it is a requirement to then take AP research the following year, and you, and you get three um, on the AP, your AP score is a three, and you get a three on four other AP courses of your choice, uh, those exams, then you are eligible for an AP capstone diploma, which is a distinction which uh, not many, there's only, we're only one of five schools now in Pennsylvania that will be offering this program, at least as of right now. And um, it's a, quite a distinction. It shows, hopefully it will show colleges that you have developed skills that will be very useful for whatever you're going to pursue in college. Students who do, who do not take the other, all of the other AP courses, but do only the two capstone courses will get an AP capstone certificate. Um, either the certificate or the diploma is, is considered to be a very prestigious honor for a student to have. Students who get a capstone diploma, in my opinion, are, are, are going to have an advantage when it comes to uh, the college admission process. The capstone program is, is developed by, was developed by the college board based on what the colleges are saying they want students coming into them to have, the, the research skills and independent uh, you know, skills, initiative and being able to work in groups and all of these skills that colleges are saying are, are lacking uh, in high school students. The capstone program is designed uh, to develop those. So any student who has that capstone diploma is going to be viewed through a different lens by a college. I think for anybody who is hoping to go on and do advanced work in college and is thinking ultimately maybe graduate school or is, is looking for a career in certain industries, these particular courses hone all of those useful skills. What they do is that they uh, attempt to teach the student to be an independent thinker, to be a creative thinker, to uh, begin a task and complete it, to work with others, to, you know, that whole idea of collaboration, and then being able to present and express to someone who knows nothing about what you're doing, so enough information so that they can understand what your research is about, what your thinking is about, and then to make arguments. If you are someone that is hoping to go on and go and do policy in any area, you would want to have skills for being able to argue for certain policy decisions. So there's all kinds of practical things that later in life, um, all of these skills could be useful. More immediately, in college, there are many courses that kids take that they have to read primary text, they have to read books, they have to compare one book with another, they have to compare one writer with another, they have to compare one philosophy with another, or another line of thinking, or one thing that happened in history compared to something else that's in history. This is the kind of course that's going to allow you to take those threads and bring them together, to come up with an idea or an answer that explains something that you've been wondering about. It could be something as broad as, as uh, topics related to foods, uh, something related to government structures, related to uh, the ethics of certain kinds of scientific research. There's so many questions that could be explored and really the only limits are their enthusiasm. And there aren't many um, courses that give you that kind of freedom to work in depth and to really follow something that you're really excited about doing. If you think about learning you know, at a, at a higher level, whether at college and graduate school, it's not about, you know, memorizing facts and, and taking tests. You know, the, the further up you go in school, education is about discovering knowledge. It's students exploring topics of interest and, and using sources of all different types. And, and these are very high level skills and not typically found at the high school level. So, you know, in college and certainly in grad school, uh, these skills are expected, uh, but introducing them and developing them at the high school level, uh, again, is just going to give the student an advantage. Mm -hmm.